Hello everyone and welcome to today's live Q&A with John Park. Um, basically today uh, we were waiting for a few more people to sign on but it looks like uh, they did not do it in time so we're going to just move on ahead and pretty much uh, let John just you know give us a, a, a little more an introduction to himself, his work and his craft and for those of you who are signed in Please feel free to ask as many questions as you like. Um, pretty much you have open access to him, which is kind of an exclusive thing, I would think, right now. So in that sense, uh, just start asking your questions, and we'll pretty much take it from there. Uh, and John, I'm going to basically give yes. you control now, so bear with mm -hmm. me in a, a second, and we'll make this happen. So... Awesome. So there you go, John. So now we can see your screen and mm -hmm. take it from there. Hi, guys. My name is John Park. Um, I am a concept artist currently working in the film and video game industry. Uh, just a quick background. Um, I attended Pasadena Art Center College of Design. Um, I was there for about four years. My first two years, I started off as a product designer. and um, my mentor was Scott Robertson at the time, and he introduced me into a new major that started up at Art Center, um, which is called Entertainment Design, and that primarily emphasizes and focuses on um, the video game and film industry. So a lot of a lot of what I demonstrated um, in the demo or the, the workshop is. It's kind of a fusion of what I learned as a product designer. Um, so just to kind of give you guys a, a quick overview of how, the way I work, um, I do a ton of thumbnails. And <clears throat> I, I really want to emphasize that as much as possible to anyone or everyone that's out there that's, that's doing mechs, vehicles, or anything that's, that needs a ton of thinking and brainstorming. Um, just like this is the way to this is the way to go, you know. Um, it's just try to try to really, um, I guess, explore and get all the get all the recycled ideas out of your your uh, your thought process. And when you start hitting a certain number of ideas, um, you know, you start to generate some really cool interesting thoughts. So I'm just going to give you guys a quick run through of my work and the things that I've done. Um, you know, it's a compilation of a lot of personal work and there's, there's some, some professional work in here, um, but not as much. I can't really show you guys today. Um, this right here is a, a, little, a little vehicle spread that I did a couple years back and it's just showing kind of the progression of thought. Um, and you guys may notice that I use different mediums here and there. Um, I do switch from using a pen to a pencil to a brush pen. Um, and the reason why I do that is it just kind of helps me to kind of think in different perspectives. Um, using a medium does kind of it helps. It really does help me to think about the different sensitivities. Um, you know, when it comes to minor details and major shape details and things like that. So um, you will see that I, I, I generally do kind of noodle in when I, when I do more, my, more of my technical drawing and when it's my brush pen drawing, it's more, more of a gesture, more of a feeling. Um, and this is more of a, a finalized direction that I kind of honed on. So. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty continuous. Um, this is just another demo that I did recently. Um, I wanted to show, I'm, I'm actually teaching a class over here in LA um, at Red Engine Studios, and this is a, a quick breakdown analysis of how to generate a thumbnail to a you know, really simplistic shape breakdown and to 
do another further analysis on how to break those internal sh it, those the shapes into more internal shapes. Um, and I did a a quick sketch just to kind of get a feel of you know what my design elements and how things are going to be um, placed in this three dimensional space. And this is my more refined drawing of that view of that sketch right here. So you know. Basically, before I, I proceed to any painting or doing like an environmental shot, I, I try to, I try to go back to, you know, just a paper and pencil and just try to generate as many ideas and um, investigate, you know, what I'm dealing with in terms of design, um, you know, how to make things, you know, more dynamic. If there's any problem solving that needs to be done, and things like that. Okay, and actually, John, along yes. those same lines, we have a question from uh, Ismail uh, who asked, in your opinion, what three to five key points make for a solid neck design? For solid neck design, um, first thing is functionality. You know, when you look at this neck, you have to know instantly what it does. Um, now there's a ton of different types of necks that have been done over the past 20 to 30 years, um, but you know it's gotten to a point where, outside of really cool panel designs and hinges and stuff like that, um, we really have to think about you know what's the practic where's the practicality in you know creating a mech you know even if it's even if it's super sci-fi fantasy. Um, you know, it's a man-made object. We have to assume it's it's sort some sort of man-made object um, with you know different levels of technology. Um, but the first thing is, you know, what does a mech do? What's like the primary objective of this mech? Um, you know, just thinking about does it like what's its sole job task? Like, why was this mech created, um, and how does it go about? Um, completing that job task. Um, so my th the, three to, the three to five points that I, I would emphasize is uh, functionality, um, secondary functionality like you know how does it help aid the first function and third function is any additional um, additional tasks that it would do to kind of you know that it needs to do f to complete the task. Um, and the, the fourth and fifth would be more minor as you as you go further along the lines, um, whether it's more for, you know, if if like your mech transforms and it compartmentalizes and it you know fits inside of a closet or something like that, you know, those would be you know your more minor functions for your mech. Um, but the first key the key things are the first three. You know, it's your primary, secondary, and tertiary functions. Okay. Uh, the next question is, do you have to do turnarounds for mech designs for assignments? Um, well, when you work, um, you'll find that, you know, the concept thing is the very beginning stages. Um, and for assignments, I, I try to get students to think about really knowing their vehicle inside and out um, because it, you know, it doesn't stay at a drawing phase. We have to remember that it's going to get built at some point, um, whether it's uh, an actual physical model or a, you know, virtual model that's going to get that we're going to see in a video game or a or in a film. Um, and, you know, those are things that you know you as a designer you have to really know the ins and out of your ins and out of your uh, your mech. Um, which makes for a really solid and successful design. Um, you know, I know, I know that you know it's not, it's really not the most exciting thing um, to kind of do these engineering-based drawings. Um, but could you show us a couple of those examples? Uh, yes. Let me see if I have. Um, you know what? I actually don't think I can show those. Oh, no problem. Those might be um, a bit sensitive. Well, yeah. Well, here's here's something I want to show you guys. Um, see if this loads up. This is kind of like my thought process um, before we go into some 
you know, finalized designs, um, I really want to emphasize just kind of the, the journey that, that it takes to kind of get into a more solidified, you know, design or a design that you're happy with. And um, I generally started here doing some really, really loose, just three-quarter, sometimes they're side view thumbnails, um, black silhouettes. And, you know, you just want to just crank as many of these out until you get a good feel of kind of what you're dealing with and, you know, the proportions, shapes, the dynamics, and um, any other functions that kind of play, play into this vehicle. Um, and then I go into more of a rudimentary, you know, quick sketch where I start breaking up some of the panels, um, just really investigating you know, the thin lines and, you know, where areas of rest, areas of complex, you know, detail and breakup. Um, you know, a quick little squiggly sketch of a pilot. Um, you know, this is, the concept behind this vehicle was, it's kind of like this air glider and, you know, the pilot actually sits on top of this, this craft, you know, and it's, it's an open, it's an open cockpit. Um, and he uses his weight or, you know, he's, it's very much like a motorcycle but with, but with wings, you know. Um, and w once you get a good feeling of, you know, the good sketch direction, then you can, you know, start jumping into paint and just, you know, do some of your value studies and some material indication. <coughs> um, you know, here I actually took uh, a sketch and I used it as a base and I did very different variations, um, you know, looking at the positioning of the actual center cockpit, uh, the wings, um, you know, just different hinge points, things like that. And then when you, when you start to, you know, a lot of this was trial and error and, you know, I, I never hit a design on my first try, or not even on my third or fourth try. Um, it, it actually takes me a long time to really get a solid design that I'm happy with. Um, and, you know, that's just kind of just the way, you know, my mind works. I, I need to just do as many, many concepts as possible. Um, and, you know, w w once, once I started investigating thoroughly into doing more tighter black and whites, I'm starting to really get, you know, really kind of figure out the, the narrative and the story behind my vehicle, you know, like even like little little logos and you know how this vehicle sits and um, what is it used for and how is it used and you know how the parts might be interchangeable and things like that. And you know I'll do a three quarter painting, um, you know, with different color and you know material indication, but I I always try to provide a really quick orthographic, um, and this is where this is where, you know, if, you, if it's not clearly presented in your, in your drawing or your painting, um, you, want to prov you want to provide some sort of visual representation of what your vehicle looks like. Um, and I hope that answers that part of the question. Um, I think it does, actually. That was pretty thorough, actually. Um, and I find it remarkable that you start out with these, what appear to be really detailed, you know, silhouettes of these different crafts and shapes and you just sketch it out as a silhouette directly or do you sketch it as far as what the actual components are and then you just block it into solid form afterwards like how does that work well um, I actually it's kind of it varies sometimes I, I will take a silhouette and um, I, I will block in you know some of the internal details um, but sometimes if my mind can't wrap around what the silhouette looks like internally, I will actually take a visual cue of a sketch, a, a silhouette, and do kind of a sketch on top. Um, so it, it's kind of it's kind of uh, you know bouncing back and forth um, okay. you know, before I jump to a more detailed render. Um, but yeah, you know it's, it's kind of you know there is no right or wrong way and. Um, you know, even with design, everything's very subjective, and I, I think the process with design can be, it, it's a very subjective way of going about it as well, um, you know, but, yeah, this is just kind of the way I, uh, I work. Awesome. Um, 
yeah, and I'd like to definitely show you guys some more, some more stuff here. Um, you know, this is something that I, I wasn't able to quite show. Um, when you guys get the chance, when you guys, um, when you guys get comfortable with a certain subject matter or a, or designing uh, a mech or a vehicle or, or anything, even a character, um, you want to start thinking about, um, I want to say, some sort of inspiration or something to kind of help theme your your design. Um, and this is this is kind of a, a personal personal exploration that I've done um, over the years, where I will take something like a like a broccoli as my main theme, and I'll start designing my these little walker or critters around the concept of broccoli. Um, and the reason why I really really encourage people to do this is because it it really does break you out of your comfort zone of you know what is what is cool what is original you know and things like that and and this is a practice that I did a few years back again um, you know with a couple of friends at Art Center and you know we just had these really wacky themes you know to kind of play with um, and yeah you know, this is just different aesthetic. It's just a different way to kind of approach your design aesthetically. Um, here's another another set that I did. Uh, this was based. This was just quickly based off of uh, fire hydrants, and you know, these are really really quick. Just done on a page. Um, you know, it's just I'm trying to just generate as many quick fun ideas. Um, you know, I have a lot of cliche designs here, but you know, the more I do do these designs and these practices, the more I start to understand some cadences that I've been repeating and, um, you know, it just kind of helps me break out of these these habits and, you know, it just trying to, it forces me to think about how can I make this thing, you know, look more original. You know, and I'll take one of those designs and I'll do a thorough analytical breakdown of, you know, what do, you know, what do the internal components look like, um, you know, kind of looking at the tolerance and spacing, uh, yeah, and just, you know, looking at a leg, you know, this is a, this is like a little crab leg that I've used many times over and over again, but I wanted to just, just do a breakdown of, okay, if I were to build this, how would it look like? Um, and I think this is very important when, you know, as a designer, you have to really understand kind of what you're dealing with. Um, and it just helps to give you a better overview of uh, what you're what you're working with, you know, um, you know, because sometimes, you know, you might have a challenge where, well, if I have a design here, what would it look like if, you know, a bazooka or you know something came and damaged one of the legs, you know, how would it fall down, or how many components would it, you know, explode into, um, yeah, things like that. Um, and this was another, you know, I gave myself themes here. Um, you know, you guys, as you guys can see, it's it's pretty repetitive uh, process that I do for myself. Um, so this is more industrial theme based, and I was just exploring all the different industrial like, uh, you know, mechs, and just you know trying to come up with different and unique proportions um, and I'll take one of these one of the mech drawings um, I think it, it might have derived from here I'm not too sure but um, you know I'll just do a quick uh, three-quarter drawing that I'm satisfied with and just do a painting that represents an industrial mech um, and this was more of an organic mech or I guess it's more of like an organic creature per se but Again, just kind of looking at you know what's my what's my inspiration, um, you know what what defines organic and why is it organic, um, and you know how does it tie in with this robotic or Walker theme that I have going on, um, and just you know investigating again proportions, weight, uh, you know just 
the intricacies of like this kind of organic fluid motif I have going on here that I, I initially I started translating here kind of inspired off of vines and um, you know looking at uh, just weird plants that kind of have this really rhythmic flow to them and yeah that was that um, this is more of your, your modern sleek you know really clean iPod-esque looking you know mech um, You know, again, just kind of looking at the, the the brainstorm aspect, kind of, you know, what are some really cool proportions. Um, obviously, this is more of a graphic take, so I wanted to see if I can balance, you know, um, positive and negative shapes, and just this is how my final design turned out to be. And this is more the scrap metal, which is my favorite. <laughs> um, you know, I, I love I love doing you know junky you know kit bashed type of themed things. I mean, it's you get like unlimited possibilities, um, and I, I had a lot of fun doing this one. Um, but again, just kind of looking at the overall theme um, and how does it tie in, and you know how many parts can I use, and and how does it uh, translate to my final uh, painting here. And yeah, I mean that's that's kind of my general thought process. Um, you know, always looking at you know the function of this thing. Um, you know where the driver may sit, um, and you know other other visual cues of you know how how it may function. Um, and yeah, just you know the theme. If you have a theme for your for your Mac or vehicle. Um, how does it tie in to your overall design? And uh, yeah, in, you know, once you have those, once you have those points, um, you start to generate a very cohesive design and you know, kind of a backstory. Very yeah. cool. And I, I love these designs, by the way. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. These were, uh, you know, they were done in a manner that was, you know, it's very, it's very animated. So. You know, that was kind of the other, the other thing that I wanted to do. Um, it's just very, kind of has a, a very stylized, whimsical feel to them. Uh, this was a kind of a spreadsheet that I did for this project. Um, and again, uh, I think one of you guys mentioned an orthographic view. Um, and I, I did this purposely because I really wanted to know kind of how my design would translate over. Um, you know, from a top view, side view, and a back view, or front view, I guess. Um, because when we, when we do a sketch or a rendering in a really cool view, it, it can be deceiving, you know, on how it translates into other views. So, you know, this is where, you know, you as a designer, it's very important that, you know, all the views look very cool. You know, that the proportion and the weight and just the overall scaling um, feels right. Um, otherwise, you know, it, it's only, you know, your, your map or your vehicle will only look cool in one point of view. And, you know, I, I believe that, that that definitely translates to everything that we design, uh, whether it's a character, environment, or a prop. Um, it has to feel good. It has to feel very consistent and cohesive in a 360-degree view. Um, you know, a lot of what I, what I tell myself you know, and, and even my students is that, you know, if this was a car like a Mercedes or a BMW, you know, you know, does it only look cool in the front or the back or does it have to be cool all around? And, you know, it's kind of, those are kind of the things that I, I try to use as an analogy to kind of test my designs. You know, does this look cool only from here, from this viewpoint? Or, you know, does it look cool when it's you know, when it's when you see the back view or when it's jumping, things like that, you know? Right. So, um, yeah, and also I also did uh, some uh, component explorations, just, you know, different legs that could attach or be interchanged. So this is kind of my, my little take on that. Um, you know, this is more of a an actual 
interchangeable centerpiece, like the cockpit. Um, yeah, I, had, I had like a huge like backstory on this about you know these these Walker these Walker competitions, these mech Walker competitions, and uh, you know each it, it's it's almost like the uh, the NASCAR of Walkers, you know, but you know in this huge epic environment, you know, where they're they're all competing to kind of you know reach the finish lines, um, and they go through all these like different terrains and. You know, they all have unique abilities and things like that. So that was my, uh, yeah, that was pretty much my, my concept behind this. Very beautiful. Thank you. We have another question that uh, yep. wanted to know, what type of real-world reference would you suggest to gather for mech design, like specifically Google keyword image search tips? Yeah. Um, I would suggest... Uh, when you start out doing mechs, um, try to look at try to look at really basic things, uh, such as like a door hinge or or even like a like pivot points on on your lamp or um, you know just really really basic basic uh, functions you know like a you know a hinge or ball hinge or things like that. And the reason why the reason why I I really recommend that is because a lot of the more complex functionalities and joineries that we see out there, I mean, they're pretty much they're pretty much based off of you know the more basic functions and hinges. Um, so you know when you're doing Google search, um, you know look at the basics and make sure you have a very clear understanding of all the all the mechanics and all the, you know, functions and things like that. And once you have a good understanding of, of the basics, you know, you can actually start to create your own, um, you know, and it's actually more catering to your own design. Um, but for, you know, just for pure referencing of how complex mechanics may look like, um, I mean, you know, you can look almost anywhere, like engine parts from a vehicle, um, axles, um, suspensions, hydraulics, things like that. But, you know, I, I always try to revert back to the basics, you know. Because we have to remember, our, our mechs are purely locomotive. So, um, you know, we're going to see them move, but then, you know, you, you want to get a good understanding, good understanding of, you know, the, the simple movements and then, you know, it breaks into the more complex movements. Awesome. We have, uh, I actually have a few questions from previous uh, live q and I want to run past you as well that I thought yeah. were relevant to what you're talking about. Uh, what was your favorite project to work on and why? Um, I want to say... And again, if you can't show anything, don't don't show it. Uh, uh, um, just talk about it. I I am I am working on some really neat projects. Um, I, I'm actually I work I work over at uh, Blind Wing Studios, um, and it's a studio that uh, Gore Verbinski, um, who's the director of Pirates of the Caribbean and the new uh, Rango movie that's coming out. Um, I work with him, and and he he had me in charge of a lot of neat projects, um, you know, having to deal with, you know, a ton of vehicle designs and things like that. And eventually, you know, he got me to do a lot of cool environmental paintings and a ton of story beats um, for those projects. But, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I have to say I really liked, I don't know, that, that's a tough one. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I actually like working on a lot of everything. Um, it just depends on, you know, I guess what my sole task is. Um, you know, I, even though I love doing mechs and vehicles, um, I try to translate that same thought process to into like characters or things like that. Um, you know, this is another, another quick example of one of my character designs I've done. Um, and you know, you want to you think about 
you know, I mean, I'm not the best at characters, but I, I try to apply some of the same, um, some of the same, I guess, process or formula when I'm developing characters. You know, who is this guy? You know, what does he do? Um, you know, what world does he come from? You know, what's the culture? You know, it, it's just, it's a ton of questions and things that you want to lay down for yourself when you're approaching the design. Um, and, you know, this character that I did, he's, he's kind of like this mutant, you know, henchman, you know, who, who lives in the junkyards and his body's all mangled up and, you know, just totally burnt. Um, and he uses, like, parts of engines and things like that to kind of, uh, you know, repurpose his body and organs. And, you know, I designed this character and, you know, he... He drives, you know, a vehicle like this. You know, this is a, another quick um, render piece I did um, for this one project. <clears throat> and, you know, just seeing how it translates and seeing how the, those two exist, coexist in the same world. Um, this is another character I did. Um, you know, very similar to the other one. Um, you know, he comes from the same, you know, junkyard-esque environment. Uh, you know, his face is all mangled up. has, like, all these bits and pieces of, like, shards of metal and, you know, just crazy piercing, yeah? Um, huge exhaust pipe that's connected to his heart. Um, you know, and it's just, that's, that's kind of the way, you know, his heart gets, you know, oxygen and things like that. Um, you know, vein trails and... You know, just a really gnarly looking, looking dude. Um, yeah, that's kind of, you know, that's, as far as projects and goes, um, I, I really like working on, yeah, I, I really don't have a favorite, I guess. It's just whatever comes my way. Okay, that's fair. Our next question is, uh, how many designs do you have to do a day in the studio you work in? Um, it, it really depends, um, but let's say if my art director or production designer asked me to do a design of a, of a mech, or let's say, for example, the demo that I did for the workshop, if he asked me, hey, John, I want to see, you know, the main walker tractor, you know, um, usually the studios will give you a day to two days to kind of flush out the design, um, but it also depends on, you know, if they're looking for, if they're looking for quick ideations, sometimes, you know, a set of these, these designs is more than suffice, you know, um, because what the, what the director or production designer would do is, I like number one, let's go with number one, and let's take bits and pieces of number three, and, you know, let's, let's combine the two. And when you combine the two, you'll get, you know, the results of number, you know, of the final design, or something like that. Um, so there's many cases like that that occurs in the studio. Um, but, you know, if, if if you're given a task, generally they won't ask for more than, you know, one or two designs a day, you know, that being the most, um, because, you know, designs do take a lot of time and investigation. Um, yeah, I mean, I hope that answers that question. <laughs> yes, it did. And Ismail says, many thanks to you. Awesome Q&A. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, our next question I'm going to ask you, uh, give me a second. Uh, basically, this is another question that uh, I thought was pretty cool when asked. Um, it, it had to deal with basically ZBrush, and is it something as a 2D artist that you think uh, uh, helps? Like, do Absolutely. you use ZBrush yourself, or um, no? I haven't used ZBrush. Um, I used Maya and SketchUp. Um, 
but I definitely think that it's it's a tool that is super handy. Um, I mean, as you know, and you guys you guys have probably heard this many times before, but uh, this industry is slowly getting more and more into the three D realm. Um, but as concept artists, um, you know, it's a very handy tool to kind of have a good understanding of you know some three D and you know still sticking with your two, with your two D. Um, you know, because when you're doing for example, when I do environments, um, I'll do a rough 3D block out just using very primitive shapes like cylinders and squares and things like that um, just so that I can get a sense of uh, camera dynamics and a solid angle and um, maybe a very primitive lighting condition. Uh, but that's, that's pretty much how, as far as I'll take it as a, as a 2D concept artist. Um, and any more work that you do into 3D, um, you know, it's just, you know, it, it's, it's better, um, but it, it also depends on how much time you have um, that, you, that you can have to, you know, to execute that environment or creature or mech or vehicle. So, because um, I know that 3D can be a time-consuming um, process but um, it does help you in the long run when you need to do turnarounds and you know really unique angles and things like that so awesome uh, the next question is let me see did you go to school for art or was it a self-taught and do you recommend any school in particular um, I, I did I attended Pasadena Art Center um, College of Design um, that was my first college that I attended. Uh, before then, uh, when I graduated high school, I took about two to three years and went to a city college in Pasadena. And I took some courses on live drawing um, and some classes that were prerequisites um, for industrial design, like industrial sketching and you know, product design one, where, you know, we were asked to redesign, you know, the next, next gen iPod or things like that. You know, those are kind of the class assignments that were given. Um, so I, I did have a lot of opportunity to take classes um, at various schools, um, such as community college and art center. Um, but I think I, I think I have to say I learned the most when I was sketching in my own sketchbook and just thinking and just constantly brainstorming and um, and uh, yeah I mean that's that's kind of my that would be the first step uh, if, if if anything very cool and my last question that I would ask is what is the most common mistake students make when trying to get a job at a game studio or studio in general I would say um, is not is only showing a cool painting but not understanding the design of of what's being shown for example um, you know we'll get portfolios that are filled with beautiful speed paintings and illustrations but you know you have to remember at, at a studio environment that's that's only the, that's like the very very beginning phases um, you know of setting a tone but you know we have to we have to know if the artist or designer can pretty much investigate and understand the design that they illustrated so um, if anything if you guys are doing really cool drawings that's great but um, from my understanding, since I've been out in the industry for, you know, I'm still fairly new to this industry, but um, is to showcase, you know, your ability to go above and beyond, um, you know, just an illustration. So if you're showing, you know, a really cool painting of a mech, um, I highly encourage you guys to do, you know, what does a mech look like when, you know, the cockpit is open? 
um, what does it look like when you're in a different scenario when you know the mech has to drill down into a huge ice cavern or you know or has to melt some kind of resource or collect something you know to give it to different scenarios like that because um, it, it it shows that you understand your design you know more than just what's being visually represented so I mean that would that would be my my two cents on that thank you sir and I will ask the attendees if there are any more questions uh, please feel free to ask them now uh, Otherwise, I think uh, we have reached a good end point for your live Q&A. Um, okay. Just give them a couple minutes to see if they have any additional questions. Yeah. Okay, it looks like everyone, I think everyone is, is, is done. Okay, well, John, awesome. I'd like to thank you uh, for giving us an amazing uh, live Q&A today. Uh, just the breadth and scope of your work is absolutely amazing and fascinating, and I just really enjoyed your presentation, and everyone really? who attended today loved it as well. Um, and basically, uh, I, I, I think we can, we can end here. Mm -hmm. um, and, yes, thank you again. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for your time. All right. Take care, sir. You too. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.